Hey, Photo Universe. Okay, Ed here. Um, this is how we configure our camera to photograph landscapes, and I do landscapes most of the time these days. It's you know, it. I don't do portraits and things like that too often anymore. I used to do a lot of weddings, ton of weddings. Now, you know, I'm mostly doing landscapes, and my business is stock photography, selling the occasional print here and there. If the economy picks up again, I'll be back to doing art shows which were pretty good, selling prints directly to the public. That was fun. I enjoyed doing that. Um, landscape photographs. But the economy, it's just not worth doing um, right now. So, okay, for landscape photography, this is how I configure my camera. Uh, no grip. Don't need the extra weight. Definitely need the uh, L bracket. And what that does is it gives me a quick release plate here and a quick release plate on the side. So I have my ball head. And I can just undo the camera and go vertical, go horizontal. Minimal recomposition required. So L bracket. This is the Kirk uh, BL K7 for the uh, K5, K7 series cameras. <clears throat> That's still in production. Kirk is still selling those. <clears throat> okay, so most of the time I'm, uh, I, and I'm just going to tell you, I mean, I, I when I go doing landscapes, I usually bring the 8 to 16 Sigma, the 16 to 50 Pentax, SDM and um, probably you know the 50 to 135 or the Tamron 70 to 210 200 28 70 to 200 28 <clears throat> that's in the bag um, but generally most of my landscapes are done with a wide angle um, I would also use the Pentax 15 prime limited definitely for landscapes great lens <clears throat> so um, 90% of the time when I'm out photographing landscapes, I'll be running with a polarizer. And that is because uh, that would um, enhance, it's already, look at that. I was out shooting some landscapes in the Columbia River Gorge uh, two days ago. Polarizer's still on the 16 to 50. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> that proves I, I actually do what I'm talking about. Okay, so um, if I'm shooting with the 15, I've got my 49 to 77 adapter ring. And I will take my polarizer and I'll put it on there like so. And there we go. So that's how I'd be running landscapes <clears throat> with that lens there. All right. As for camera settings. So most of the time I'm going to be in aperture priority where it's already there. Most of the time I'll be running the lowest ISO I can go. Um, or the native ISO of this camera, it's 100. Okay, so ISO 100, I'll be running aperture priority. I'll have a polarizing filter on. ISO 100, aperture priority. Um, I'll have one of my dials dedicated, like here I've got the front dial dedicated to, um, here I've got the front dial dedicated to uh, exposure compensation. That's how I'll bracket. Um, I'll usually be running mirror lockup. So in this camera, you come into, the, I'll be tur uh, turn the image stabilization off. Okay. Um, I'd be running mirror lockup. So I'd be locking the mirror up. This is on a tripod now. So image stabilization off, mirror lockup on, aperture priority, exposure compensation is on a quick dial. Um, I'm usually shooting F8, F11 for depth of field. I'll set my focus point, okay? So I'll set my focus point, like if I'm doing a horizontal, here's my focus indicator here, okay? If I'm, if, I'll either manually focus, but most of the time, the trick that I'll use is I'll set my focus point, like I'm doing a horizontal, I'll set it the closest to me, and that'll usually get me about a third into the scene where my point of focus is, so this way my hyperfocal distance will carry me. Um, if I'm doing a vertical, I'll usually set the point at the lowest, the closest to me, which is usually the bottom. So that's a trick for a hyperfocal distance. And um, uh, white balance. I usually I don't use auto. Usually when I'm doing a landscape, I'll I'll choose between cloudy or shade. I want a little bit brighter. I'm not a little bit brighter. I want a little bit warmer. White balance. So cloudy or shade. For outdoor landscapes okay um, that's pretty much it 
All right, that's how I configure my camera for landscapes. Uh, value of metering, aperture priority, f8, f11, focus in the front, native ISO, so that's 100 or you know, 200 on some of the Nikon models. Um, usually it's 100. Image stabilization to off either on your lens or in your camera. And uh, I shoot RAW. I usually don't shoot uh, RAW plus JPEG. I usually just shoot RAW. Uh, white balance to shade. The image, uh, is if you have some, some of these newer cameras have uh, modes that you can go in. I don't usually shoot landscape, although it was in landscape. I'll shoot bright or natural because you can, if you, when you're shooting raw, you'll post process. This is just gives you an idea of what your um, display is showing you. I'll, I'll go with natural or, or, or standard or, you know, something like that. So um, let's see. That's about it. So those are my configurations for, uh, for photographing landscapes. And, and the reason I photograph 90% of the time with a polarizer on the front of the lens is because uh, usually landscapes involve some kind of foliage and stuff. And it'll enhance the colors in the foliage. It'll make them deeper most of the time. I mean, the point is, you just, you, sometimes it'll do nothing. But um, most of the time, if you spin it, it'll change your, your tonality a little bit. And it'll make things deeper and richer. And so uh, that's what I use that for. So there it is. Those are my landscape configurations for my camera and what I set. And if you have any questions, throw them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. But that's how I set up my camera for landscapes. Those are the major, major things that I do to get uh, decent landscapes. Okay, that's it with Photo Universe and thanks for watching.